Greetings, fellow mathematicians. For this differential equation, which we'll solve with a power series approach, we're gonna focus on what to do when you have more than just a power of x, here, one plus x, multiplying y or its derivatives. Now, it's actually really simple. Your intuition might be guiding you. We're probably tempted to wanna to distribute that y through the parentheses, which that's exactly what we wanna do. It's just going to give us extra power series to deal with. Keep in mind, when you multiply x to your power series for y here, multiply powers of x, you can add their exponents. We're gonna get two different power series once we distribute. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll write this as y double prime minus y minus xy. And the reason why, again, we want to split this up, here we have our power series for y, but this x multiplying y, that's going to bump x to the n up to x to the n plus 1. So let's go ahead and plug in our power series. We're going to plug in the power series for y double prime, and we're going to be using the power series for y in two spots, the middle term, which is y, and then the last term, which has x times y. That's where the exponent will be increased by one. So let's take our time. Power series for y double prime. We have that as the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of n times n minus 1 times c sub n times x to the n minus 2. Now we have minus the power series for y. And that sum goes from n equals 0 to infinity of c sub n times x to the n. Just a word of caution for some of the work that we're going to get through here. Keep in mind, this is not a single term. This minus sign will distribute to all infinite terms here in the summation. So keep in mind that you want to distribute that minus sign for everything within this power series if it's easier put parentheses around that infinite series as a reminder. All right, let's go ahead and put now the power series for xy, which again has a minus. That goes from n equals 0. We have c sub n, and since we're multiplying y by x, we're going to increase the exponent since x times x to the n is x to the n plus 1. So your power of x here, x to the n plus 1. And the right-hand side is 0. All right, now we have some options here. We want to collapse all these three different power series into a single one, but also at the same time, we want to try to have the same power of x. We have a few options. And it looks like the one that's going to be probably the, the nicest. Let's go ahead and shift everything to x to the n as our power of x. Now that means for this middle power series, we can leave that alone. We're not going to shift any terms here. For the last one to get x to the n, looks like I would need to replace n. with n minus 1. So just check, make that replacement in your power of x there. n minus 1 plus 1 gives you x to the n, so that works. And it looks like here we're going to have to shift, looks like to get x to the n, we'd make a replacement, all n's being replaced with n plus 2. Again, just do a quick check, plug that in, and replace n plus 2 minus 2 does leave you with x to the n. All right, also keep in mind when you make your replacements, your starting indices are going to shift. Let's just go ahead and go through that since that's easily overlooked in class if we're going too fast. So let's make that replacement for this one. We have on the left n minus 1 equals 0. And if you solve that, Looks like the new starting index, once we shift, would become n equals 1. And if we do the same thing here, 
for the first power series, replace the left part of that equal sign with n plus 2 equals 2. And if you solve that, it looks like we get now n equals 0. All right, let's go ahead and shift and change indices in the first and third power series. So let's be careful here. The power series we now solve starts with n equals 0. That goes to infinity. We're replacing n with n plus 2. Just be careful with some of the work here. n plus 2 minus 1. Looks like that'll become n plus 1. Don't forget your subscript for c here, the coefficient. That's going to be now c sub n plus 2. And your power of x becomes x to the n. All right. Middle power series, we're leaving that as is. So let me just copy that. Minus the power series with n equals 0 to infinity of c sub n x to the n. And then your third power series here. We have the minus. We saw that when we make this replacement, the starting index shifts to now n equal 1. And again, your subscript of the coefficient changes to now c sub n minus 1. And we get x to the n. And that is probably all of the tedious, tricky work for this problem. Notice we now have x to the n everywhere. So we're basically able to add the coefficients, but we're not able to combine all three power series since there's different starting indices. Well, if we take a look at this one, n equals 1, we're just going to write out one term, the n equals 0 term for each of these power series and then they'll start at n equals 1. All right, so just be careful here. Again, there's this minus. That minus will distribute to all terms in this middle power series. So let's write out the first term for here. Our first term is going to correspond to n equals 0. So if you plug in 0 everywhere for n, looks like we get 2 times 1, c sub 2, and then x to the 0. Our value for n now goes up to n equals 1 and beyond. Everything else remains the same. All right, again, be careful with your minus sign. I'm making sure to point that out. That's likely where some of even my best students make a slight mistake. So we're going to write out a term here, n equals 0. But there's the minus. When n is 0, we just get c sub 0, since we have x to the 0, which is 1. We're still going to have the minus in front of the power series starting with now n equals 1. So that goes up to now n equals 1. Everything else remains the same. And we don't need to write any terms out from here since that starts with n equals 1. So we get minus that same power series, n equals 1, to infinity of c sub n minus 1 times x to the n. And we are pretty much done. Just don't forget about your terms here. From writing out terms, but your power series, we're now going to be able to combine them together, and since we have the same power of x, x to the n, we're going to be able to add all the coefficients. So let's extract the terms that we wrote out. 2 c sub 2 minus c sub 0, and then all your power series. We're going to combine them together, adding and subtracting their coefficients. So we'll get a single power series starting with n equals 1. And the first coefficient of x to the n we have is this, n plus 2 times n plus 1. And that's times c sub n plus 2. Go to your next power series. We have minus c sub n. 
and then your last power series minus c sub n minus 1. And that's all multiplying x to the n. And again, don't forget how we actually extract our information here. We are basically equating coefficients for powers of x on each side. And keep in mind here, your power series, that's where all your powers of x are. With n equals 1, your first power of x you get is x to the 1, then x squared, x cubed, and beyond. So just as a reminder, like I always mention in class, write out the missing powers of x there with coefficients of 0, just as a reminder. And from here, we can get our conditions. This constant, notice there's no x on either term, has to equal that constant. So our first condition is that 2c sub 2 minus c sub 0 has to equal 0. And if you solve that, looks like we can conclude here that c sub 2 is going to be half of c sub 0. If we had initial conditions, we'd be able to solve for c sub 0, but there's no initial conditions here. We're just going to find the recurrence relation, which is the second condition we get. All your coefficients in the brackets, that has to equal 0, since all powers of x and higher powers have zero coefficients. So our second condition is that n plus 2 times n plus 1 times cn plus 2 minus c sub n minus c sub n minus 1. That has to equal 0. And hopefully you're comfortable with what to do from here to get a useful form for your recurrence relation, which you could iterate to get values of coefficients. We want to solve this for the higher indexed term. And if we just write this out here, again, a very basic number line, we have a coefficient with a subscript n plus 2. n would come before n plus 2. And then n minus 1 would come before that. So here, our highest indexed term is c sub n plus 2. If you solve for that, you can do that basically in two steps. Add these two coefficients or terms to the other side, and then divide by these factors. So it looks like we'll get c sub n plus 2 is going to be c sub n plus c sub n minus 1 and then now divided by n plus 2 times n plus 1. Only other thing that we need is our starting value here for what values of n that recurrence relation applies. You can see that here in your summation. That starts with n equals 1 and goes on from there. Also make sure you check you want to always avoid division by 0 and negative indices. And it looks like if we do start this recurrence relation with n equals 1, that avoids both those issues, division by 0, and any negative indices. And we get our recurrence relation, which is what we were after for this problem. And again, if the differential equation had initial conditions, then we would be able to iterate this and get numerical values for as many coefficients as we want. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you're learning a lot on your journey through differential equations. If you are, support the channel, like and subscribe.